Around the NFL podcast had their request to guarantee their incentives denied. <laughs> oh, wow. From the Chris Wessling podcast studio. That one hit too close to home. It's Around the NFL. I'm Dan Hansis. Once again, a new partner. Mark Sessler now on vacation, but back from vacation, Greg Rosenthal. Hey, buddy. I mean, it's not that new a partner. We've done about 1,300 shows, I would guess. 1,700? Who really knows? So many. Millions of shows, perhaps. Uh, How you doing, pal? I I was good. I'm good. You know, went back to Massachusetts, saw the fam, saw the Celtics put up 144 in a game, win by 42. Got some nice seats. Two seed in the East. That's good. Oh, I'm not. They're going to probably have to play the Nets, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, I do want to touch on, we did uh, check in on your social media while you were gone, and there was a uh, Instagram story. Okay. Uh, of you looking out into the abyss, into the, enjoying nature. Uh-huh. And we're like, oh, that wasn't very like Greg to really put himself out there like that on social media. And we were just wondering what headspace you were in at that moment. Uh, you clearly didn't actually listen to it. It was just sort of a, a joke. It was like peace and quiet. It was this pretty view. Yeah. But then seven seconds in, Walker's voice pops up and is like, Mommy, where are you? So you you didn't have – it was just like a bit. You know? Oh, I see. All right. Well, then uh... – Wait, what's your bit here? Oh, no, we thought it was tied to, you know, recreational – no. Substance use. Unfortunately, not that day, but certainly certainly that's in the mix on a family vacation. All right, good. Well, I'm glad you had a nice vacation. What? No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that? That's Connie Fox's music. Oh! There's a wall. There's a wall. Oh, my goodness. Can't blow your house. We can't hear you because you're not wearing a microphone. You, it's the first thing they teach you in walk out of school. Turn up, my Apple, please. Turn her up. Colleen Wall. You look like you worked on that walk-in. Mm. I did. Check out. Check us out on Instagram. Hold on. I got to get this chair now. It's gotten to the point where the Colleen walk-in is leading to Connie shooting me the bird from behind the glass. But I think it's brand building. I think you'll look back one day and say, thank you, Dan, for get, trying to get this bit off the ground because it's going to pay off in spades with some type of major sponsorship or something down the line. That's, That's my great. Question. How are I you? I hope so. I am wonderful. I just finished a little mock draft live. You guys can check that out on NFL Network. Lance Zerline just released his latest mock. I'm all warmed up right now. I also sprinted up the steps <laughs> in heels with my asthma, um, and I don't have an inhaler, so it's going to be fine. All right. Take a deep breath. You actually you were in Tybee Island this weekend with Joel. I was. That's so nice. we How had. Was that? A wedding in Savannah. One of my best friends from college got married there, and Tybee's obviously like 20 minutes away from Mm -hmm. Tybee. So I stayed an extra day, and I got my friend to come to Huckapoo's with me. And it was so nice. It was a gorgeous Mm -hmm. day, first of all, but it was just so nice because I felt like I was hanging out with Wes. And I got to uh, our good friends Rosie and Wayne, who Mm -hmm. know uh, Wes very well. They came and met up with us. And then they randomly pulled like two gigantic collages out of nowhere, like from behind a booth and dusted them off. And it was all of these photos of Wes from At years Huckaboos? and years ago from Huckapoos mm. with all of the characters. I don't remember that, seeing that. I had We've, never seen been it. there multiple times now. It was amazing. It was oh, such a great cool. time. Yeah. And then um, our buddy Wayne, he has a Pontiac GTO, which yeah, I does. did not know about. So he took us for a spin in that. I had a wonderful time. That is, so. that's a great, I always thought that um, Tybee was always 120 degrees with 100% humidity, but you're saying there's actually just nice chill weather there too? Well, the wedding that I had on yes. Saturday was on a dock with no heaters <laughs> and it dipped down to about 40 degrees there you go. and Other way. major wind gusts. So yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't do any, I was home, I was home this weekend. Loser. Uh, big time loser. Uh, took the sons to see Sonic 2. How was that? Yeah. You know what it is? Cool. It's two hours and two minutes long. And you know what? The next day, or that night, I was scanning through Netflix, and uh, Full Metal Jacket, the great Stanley Kubrick masterpiece, was on. So what'd you do? One hour and 56 minutes long. <laughs> it's a lot of movies. 
I am in a world of sh- This is not the time for the Mark bot. I know he's on vacation, but we don't I'm annoyed right now. now. Okay. You so, saying little filler in Sonic 2? I'm just saying they maybe it's time for all of Hollywood to take a good look in the mirror. That's all. I agree with it. I can't sit still. Uh, It's really difficult for me to watch a movie in general, so I would much rather a show. I went and saw that movie Drive My Car in the theater because I knew I would never be able to sit through it at home. Two hours and 50 minutes. The new Batman's three hours. What's (laughs) going on? No, that's way too much. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. It's too much. Today's show, great to have the crew here. Mark getting his much-deserved vacation, so uh, we'll try to leave him alone. Okay. Uh, That's very important. Coming up on today's show, yes, it is the unveiling on the podcast of the 2022 Graybeards with very special guest, uh, my roster consigliere, Evan Silva of Establish the Run. So uh, that's coming up a little later. But first, we have to get caught up on the news. It's funny. Some people see M and they see him as some (laughs) foul mouth rapper, but to me, he's a storyteller. (laughs) That's what I feel about myself when I'm holding this guitar. <laughs> anyway, look at me going on and on. Here's satellite. These are the messages I get from Dan Hansis on a regular basis. I have no context for this. I don't need it. I no, don't need it. You, well, I don't you, want it. We had a brief conversation. You should have context for my own, uh, if you have any respect <laughs> for me. Um, no, we. Uh, I talked about, we were talking about guitar play. I asked yeah. you if you knew how to play guitar. I don't know how to play guitar. And I said, if I did know how to play guitar, I would have been a great dorm douche back in college because mm. that's endless game. I mean, it's it would be a shooting fish in a barrel. That would be an example of dialogue I would share. We were trying to do like a live <laughs> performance of a bit coming up, but, you know, that didn't work out. I and, think it worked out better, though. Yeah, and uh, Satellite, of course, is Dave Matthews' band because if you had DMB. three Dave songs in your back pocket with the acoustic guitar in the dorm. You were crushing it at Northeastern with you. If I had a guitar, <laughs> but I didn't, yeah. so I wasn't. All right, let's get into the news. Let's start with something really sad, really tragic. Steelers quarterback Dwayne Haskins died Saturday morning after he was hit by a vehicle in South Florida. Uh, 24 years old. Uh, Unbelievable tragedy here. Standout at Ohio State. A star there. Helped them win a championship. All Big Ten honors. Went to the NFL. Did not go um, as well in the pros, but... Uh, it's hard to believe, Greg, uh, that we would lose Dwayne Haskins at this age, 24 years old. What a tragedy. Yeah, it's really sad. You know, he was he was expected to return to the Steelers this year, play, play a backup role there. And when you follow these players, you, you don't know them. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes something like this to learn more about Dwayne Haskins, like the man and the friend. And you just heard so much from his teammates both in Washington and Pittsburgh of like what he meant to them, that he was always looking to improve, looking to get better, that he was a very um, passionate like person and impacted so many people. All we know about is like what we see on the field. And I don't know, it's, it, it's tough. Uh, All these Early death, they they always like hit hard, but it hits even harder after Wes for some yeah. reason. That just like whenever a life is lost too soon, and the way our world is now that we're bombarded with social, you know, media and just information all the time, like it's always happening. But it it just makes you think. It it definitely hit me different because I was already feeling nostalgic for Wes when I was in Georgia, and then I got the news of Dwayne Haskins. And I had a chance to talk with him a lot at the combine and he was so sweet before he was coming out. Like we talked about so many different things just about him and his life and, and what he, what he liked. He, we had this shared love for Allen Iverson, who Mm. that was the first person who got me into sports. And he also just had this love for cooking and this infectious smile and had an entire Instagram dedicated to the dogs that he and his girlfriend shared together. So we talked about so many different things. I remember he had thrown at a special needs football camp, and that was something that was really special and important to him. And he also had this 
eighth grade science project that he did because everybody always brings up the fact that he wanted to go to Ohio State and he talked about it and he uh, he had basically said that he was going to go there and then it happened. But I thought that this was interesting. He had this eighth grade science project that he did and he was able to determine that an over the top throwing motion produces the cleanest release, the tightest spirals and the highest velocity. And he got an A on the project and he was so proud of that. So it's just so tragic, the entire situation. He was so young and it's just so, so sad. And it it did because you learn you learn more about someone um, after they pass, somebody that's a celebrity or someone that's a notable figure sometimes. And for me, as someone who didn't doesn't follow college closely, I didn't know any of that Dwayne Haskins as a college star. Legend. A, a legend mm-hmm. at Ohio State, that guy that was born to play there and then took the team uh, to Rose Bowl greatness. So from me, it was, as a football, as a professional, I only knew the guy that wasn't ready for the NFL, that didn't uh, play well in Washington and now was hoping to make it and stick around at Pittsburgh as a backup. So it's just it's a reminder that these people – um, people are more than what they do just on the field. When you get to the NFL, there's a there's a whole person behind it. It's just it's a tragic thing. Everyone who was getting passed around, of course, on on social media, his last Instagram post, or he was just messing around having fun with uh, different Steelers players. They were working out in Florida uh, when this accident occurred. Uh, just very sad, and um, our hearts go out to his family. So Dwayne Haskins passes away at 24. Hard to believe. Moving on, uh, Calais Campbell and the Ravens are back in business. Two years, $12.5 million deal. Uh, makes too much sense because Campbell has spent the last two years in Baltimore and has remained a really productive player, Greg, both against the run and getting after the quarterback. Uh, there's few, maybe he's not the same guy he was five years ago, but still a big-time productive talent. He wouldn't be on the street. I mean, he looks longer. like the same guy that uh, oh, yeah. he was when you were sidling up to him at some... Um, the biggest man I've ever, like, been... Yeah. What was that? Hard Knocks, like, It was party. the all-or-nothing premiere in downtown L.A. Yeah. I mean, the deep, the deepest voice in the game. There's one of w- one. You know, they say that a lot when... When when people pa- pass or, but Calais came in terms of what he does as a player is yeah. is a one of one. There's really kind of no one like him. His size, his ability, and his um, ability to not get any worse as he gets older. Like PFF, if he goes to the Hall of Fame, and I think he'll have a chance. I think he'll be discussed. PFF will be part of the process because he's been one of the highest ranked like interior defensive linemen throughout the PFF era. Hmm. And I think that's I think that's helped the football cognoscenti really know and appreciate a player like him. He kind of reminds me a little a different style, but an Aaron Smith uh, who was with Pittsburgh a while back, also a PFF favorite. Bill Belichick loved him. It was like a Richard Seymour type doing a lot of the dirty work that doesn't get a lot of. Uh, the publicity or the stats, but the football heads know. I, work- I love that. PFF, has there been a PFF Hall of Famer yet? And if there hasn't, would Campbell be the first? Ooh. I think Andrew Whitworth will be the first test. I think he mm, uh, okay. now became more famous later in his career because he, be- he joined the Rams and he started to get a few more all pros and he ended how he ended. Uh, but I think for a while, PFF was kind of carrying the flag that, hey, actually, I know there's Joe Thomas and Walter Jones and all these other guys, but Andrew Whitworth is one of the best three or four tackles in the league. Year after year, they were saying that, and eventually I think everyone caught up, so he could be the first. Calais continues to be so good. I really thought that he was going to retire having had a chance to work with him on game day morning this year during the playoffs. Just talking with him, he was saying that he was trying out some different things in media, and he liked it. And first of all, he is just the nicest guy in the world off the field and yes Dan I can confirm he's the largest human being I've ever met oh I'd love to see you guys side by side he's like a gentle giant he's so cool too I I just had such a great time working with him but he was so thoughtful in what we were doing for the show and the conversations that we were having and I can tell that he is the same way on the field too and you can see it when he plays the fact that he's known as a guy that gets after the quarterback but these last few years he's been really used as a run stopper but I just I like what Baltimore did bringing him back there were reports that he turned down offers elsewhere to go back to Baltimore the Ravens just brought back Josh Bynes on Friday I so, wish they had gotten yeah. Bobby Wagner I love yeah that I want to like be picking the Ravens as a big comeback team because football outsiders had this stat that they were the most 
injured team in the last 20 years. Like they 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 track adjusted games lost every year. And it's just a number. And the Ravens were the least lucky, t- the most unlucky team in 20 years. And so to me, if you had added Bobby Wagner and all the players I coming know. back and all this, but even then, uh, Campbell, they brought back Michael Pierce, who they used to have, uh, who was in Minnesota too. You feel good about the Ravens right now? I'm so I'm saying I'm, they're just a natural candidate to totally bounce back. Yeah, makes they sense. were very unlucky mm-hmm. towards the end of last year, losing all those close games and were just decimated by injuries. Uh, he was in conversation with Peter King uh, recently, and he believes, Cosell, that there could be five quarterbacks taken in the first round. Greggy, this. Well, there's a, I'm of two minds on this one. Of course, because that seems how it always works out. But two, this year's like the ultimate test because back in February before the combine, everyone was of the opinion there might not be any quarterbacks or maybe <laughs> one that would go in the first round. But what happens after the combine, after the pro days, as teams figure out the lay of the land after free agency, there's always going to be that hunger uh, at the signal caller position. It 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 is the ultimate test of that. I feel like the year that – Christian Ponder and Jake Locker and all them started going 8, 10, 12 was, was where it got really crazy. And they put all those guys on the cover with, with Cam Newton on Sports Illustrated. And then this this draft is turning into a similar case, but it, it makes sense to me. First of all, when you go through all these players, like they don't seem like that bad prospects. They seem all like borderline first round picks. Right? And so if you're the Panthers or you're the Seahawks or you, you're these teams that are being talked up the Steelers to maybe take them in the first round. Are you going to wait for round two? Or are you just going to take them? Just take them. I think that this year is so such a weird class with the quarterbacks, though. And even the mock drafts that have come out from our guys here at NFL Network, like Bucky had one two weeks ago that came out, had zero quarterbacks going in the first round. And that's something that I thought might actually be possible, but – with that fifth year option, you know teams are going to trade into the back end, but I just don't know about this quarterback class compared to years past because just based on everything that I've heard from insiders and scouts and teams, it's not a good class. And it seems like teams are going to always talk themselves into just taking a chance on someone. But if you draft a first round quarterback, then you're beholden to that. And if that player isn't as good as maybe the scrub that you already have on your roster, oh, you're in some trouble. Now, Sam yikes. Darnold does not need to be called you know a that's scrub. Who I'm that's of. too far. <laughs> but that's the, they're, they're the best example. And Josh, Sam Darnold. <laughs> Josh Norris on Twitter today kind of pointed out they've traded back a ton and they're at six. So they're a candidate to trade back and then take a Desmond just, or something. I've, but, like, are you really going to so go doomed. through this quarterback and not go through this draft and not take one? Are the Saints really getting out of this first round with those two picks no. without taking a quarterback? I don't know. The it, Saints, I think, take one. I think the Steelers probably will because that makes a lot of sense, especially with the, the tragic news of Haskins and then Ben Roethlisberger not being there and having Mitchell Trubisky. Sure. But I think the Lions are an interesting candidate to yep. trade up because of that 30-second pick that they got from trading Matthew Stafford they they don't have any long term options. So those Jared examples Goff. are all good examples of teams that, if it makes sense, if they're in a position to take a quarterback and they feel comfortable doing it where they are in the draft, yes, take a swing. Like Greg, you mm-hmm. always say, just keep taking swings. But the Panthers are that perfect example of the team that might be they've backed themselves into a corner here, and now they had they might have to take a swing. They're not even confident about and that's usually when disaster strikes but who knows you also nobody knows anything so they might hit on a guy that everyone roundly criticizes as being a bad pick and then he becomes a good starter right like the i don't know where guys get drafted so gets talked about a lot on draft weekend and then it it fades away chad Chad reuter a rooter on our website has three going in the top 12 I mean, Which the, is like that that feels like and whether it's right or not. And a lot of times the pre-draft buzz is is not right. But the buzz at this moment is that they are, keep creeping up. And mm-hmm. I think I think it kind of makes sense because when you actually hear about all these guys, to me, they they sound attractive. Like they sound like good prospects, depending on what you're looking for. Like everyone looks at them differently. There's not some huge consensus. But I feel like each one you can make the case is a first round pick. Um, All right, we're about to take a break, but I just want to say something. Mm. Uh, Our YouTube page, which, by the way, Ricky, what is – how do people get to 
our YouTube. If you just type in NFL podcast, we have a full podcast page that just hit over 20,000 subscribers. Whoa. Hot damn. Yeah. Awesome. So if you want to see every Colleen intro into the studio <laughs> since this bit began, like. yeah. go to YouTube. You can go to YouTube. You can also go to our Instagram page at ATN, the ATN podcast. If you want to see Greg getting aroused by the talk of Teddy Bridgewater. I don't want to see this. No. In a, in, no, one's, in a, no one's in a nice why? spot down in Miami. Go to YouTube. If you want to see Mark getting redder and redder in the face and looking like he's about to kill us, go to YouTube. Yeah. Over 20,000 subscribers. Our Instagram is also over 20,000. So go follow us on Instagram, too, at uh, the ATN podcast. And uh, let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, back. Let's hit the rest of the news before we get to the Greybeards and Evan Silva. Uh, oh, boy. I mean, what is going on down there? The U.S. House Oversight Committee sent a letter to the Federal Trade Commission saying it found evidence that the NFL's Washington commanders engaged in unlawful financial conduct. In a letter obtained by the Associated Press, the committee said the team withheld ticket revenue from visiting teams and refundable ticket deposits from season ticket holders. The committee said emails, this is all part of the Associated Press, documents and statements made by former employees indicate team executives and owner Dan Snyder engaged in a, quote, troubling, long-running, and potentially unlawful pattern of financial conduct. Greg, the Washington football team, as they were known, now the commanders, as they're currently known, have been connected to nefarious behavior uh, for years now. And you wonder if something that involves money coming out of owners' pockets... Could be the thing that changes things in Washington. Well, it's all very public. This letter that one congressman uh, sent out the, from the oversight committee is was being released. And the NFL is not going to say much, but I'm just reminded of Roger Goodell making it clear at the end of his last press conference that Dan Snyder was not running the Washington commanders and that he did not expect that to change anytime soon, which is, I mean, a pretty drastic and um, almost unprecedented situation for an NFL team owner. And all of this evidence that they're seeking and the accusations that they're making is all coming out of uh, an investigation into their treatment in the workplace uh, of women. So it's it's multiple things happening and it's affecting the NFL in a, a very serious way that they don't want to. It's unprecedented. We're not going to guess what what happens here, but I think it's safe to say it absolutely has the NFL's attention. Whew, I think if the owners find out that they were duped out of money and a lot of money that should have been theirs, then they're actually going to do something about this. Like I... I don't know of many things that would send a lot of shockwaves to people, but when you take someone's money and you're like a billionaire, that's something that they care about. Right. You don't take money from billionaires. Mm -mm. Bad things will happen to you. Um, We'll see how this unfolds. We'll continue to track it uh, as more details uh, come out. Uh, Some quickies before we uh, wrap up the news. Wide receiver corner, Brandon Cooks, back to the Texans. Uh, and a two-year extension, I believe. Good for him. Hopefully he doesn't get traded. The, he's been a wildly productive receiver uh, over the course he's of getting, his career. He's getting the benefit of this whole, like, every wide receiver gets a lot of money. Brandon Cooks is like, hey, man, I'm like, I, you know, he's the equivalent of uh, the NBA players. Just like, I'm a bucket. I'm a 1,000 yards. He's right. a bucket. He's a 1,000 yards no matter what. Right. You can stick him on the Texans. He's going to get 1,000 right. yards. I liked what Pep Hamilton said, that Brandon Cooks provides a level of paranoia for defenses. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Brandon Cooks' selling point, uh, he could represent himself. I will give you exactly 1,100 yards and six to seven touchdowns every year. Is I mean, that good <laughs> enough for you? Does that is there a place on your roster for me, Brandon Cooks? I, I the, the most interesting thing about this no was like needed. that the Texans like actually wanted to keep someone. I've been waiting like because there was this talk that they might end up trading Cooks, and I was I'm starting to wonder like what is the point of the Texans here. I feel I, so bad for him. He just is constantly. What are the point of the? <laughs> like it's kind of the same thing uh, is question. is true with the the whole Seattle rumors uh, of trading DK Metcalf or or even the AJ. I don't know where this stuff is coming from. Of, but it's like, what is the point of the Seahawks if the if you're just trying to trade away your best players? Because like that doesn't that doesn't work. That this never worked. This isn't the NBA. 
Like, you're not good at drafting. The Seahawks are bizarre right now for me. <laughs> uh, so you're saying, and I'll use... I'm just saying, like, uh, you want to have right. good young players. Uh, Russell Wilson, I could almost put him in a different boat. But you have a guy in your 20s. Why are you trying to get rid of good players? I don't get that. I'll, yeah, I'll use a baseball analogy. Before they were caught cheating, the Astros were famous for they stripped it down all the way down to the studs but that's baseball started over oh well, i'm saying and then through good drafting built a superpower do we have any evidence that that works in the nfl <laughs> but there are teams that try can, it like we're can... seeing it right now with the jets for instance or the lions but you still need to have the right leadership and then you got to get lucky on several picks uh, working out it's a lot it takes a lot to build a team from the bottom. I, I know that the cowboys have done a really good job in the draft uh these years past look at what they've done in the first round i mean they've gotten Great. like seven of their last first round picks uh seven of their eight last first round picks were all pro Well, the Herschel bowlers. Walker trade is a perfect example, but that was 30 years yeah. ago. Uh, that was that was their one good asset on those Dallas teams when Jerry Jones first took over with Jimmy Johnson, sent him to the Vikings and took those picks and built a dynasty. It can be done, but it's very difficult. But it's getting rid of good players doesn't help you get other good players. That's the po- it was my point. Yes, you can get extra a couple extra But you can. Like you can get a couple extra draft picks, but all you're hoping to do is somehow find a DK Metcalf in that. You have like, a known commodity versus the draft and like who knows my, what's going to happen. It, it's kind of like if you look at the cap space in the league now, there's a lot less teams that are rolling in every year with way too much cap space because I think GMs have realized partly due to the Rams and, and Eagles and and Titans and Patriots and how some teams have run. It's like, you're wasting money with cap. What is the point of cap space? You should be maxing out to win every year or else you're going to lose and you're going to get fired. It's like a two-year league. So getting rid of good young players, I, I guess. Greg, what is the point of anything, yeah. really? No, that's you're going to get fired. Uh, <laughs> Titans uh, coach Mike Vrabel says, when A.J. Brown hits the trade block, I will not be the head coach. So that was sh- struck down very hard. Uh, A.J. Brown leaving Tennessee. And Terry McLaurin, your boy, Greg, uh, not negotiating with Washington. Keep an eye on that. Everyone is talking about A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. But if there's a wide receiver hungry team out there, we know there are several. Uh, Terry McLaurin is well respected by people that follow the game. Uh, Where is this coming from? Is there any it doesn't sound like the Titans are at all interested. I think it's just this feels like it's just coming out. Well, I took it from once Gravedigger said that it wasn't serious. I I took that as gospel. Yeah, that's I've moved forward. Yeah. Personal on that. Um, and finally, or two things, uh, the Broncos, Texans, Jaguars, Raiders, Vikings, and Bucks uh, all have started their voluntary workouts. Uh, dead last on that list, Cincinnati Bengals, by a wide margin, the last to start workouts. And, you know, uh, I think you can maybe look at the success they had last year. And I think... Connie, this goes in all walks of life. Uh, you can't rest on your laurels. You can't just assume you're going to get back to that point or Whoa. take the next step. And Cincinnati punting on an early start uh, to voluntary workouts. Don't tell me they played, made, had a long playoff run. I don't care. That's in the past. Show me that you're serious about winning tomorrow, not yesterday. I would say rest and recovery is just as important as working out. It's all part of working out, really, and that's how you maximize things. So not work harder, work smarter. Work smarter. That old bit. Yep. All right. It's a way of life. It is interesting, though, that they're so far behind everyone. Like, I think they're two weeks behind everyone. Are you listening, Colleen? Greg's agreeing with me. They they got to the Super Bowl. How far no. behind, Greg? Tell <laughs> Con- Connie, because I don't think she's educated on this. Oh, okay. Tell her how I'm far behind through, they are. I'm looking through it. It's two weeks behind. Oh, oh I, I think I found why Connie is not dialing into this. So they're two weeks behind every team in the entire league, including okay. the champion Rams. I mean, they're coming back to work. Oh. Smoking gun. Um, Colleen, except, are you going to let the mansplain to no, you like no, no, that? No, no, no. It's well, not a mansplain. I'm take them down. Listen. I, as someone that doesn't enjoy working out, I completely co-sign. I'm aligned with what the Bengals are doing right now, and I think they're doing a fabulous job, and they could do whatever so they want. So slug it out. You know, sh- why not show up week one? Now, well, it's the, What month is it even? It, it's April. Like, who cares? Uh, they're going to have they, other workouts. They're going to have OTAs. They're going to have a whole... Check, check, back, check back with me in October. So okay. their, first day is, Deal. their first day is two weeks after everyone else, except for one team. You know who else is changing the game? Who has actually taken the longest rest of any team Patriots. in the NFL? 
No. Colleen's own Philadelphia. Ex- exactly. Oh. This is this is what you do. You know. Maybe she knew uh, that. This oh. is why Lyle Collins <laughs> left Dallas and went to Cincinnati and immediately got a Bengals tattoo on himself. I, <laughs> the thing is, though, they're just working out. Though they're just they're yeah. not actually on the field. So I mean, I when I watch when I watch the really Eagles matters. in the playoffs in January, my first thought was take a long break. You've earned it. I thought maybe they could just stop after two quarters. Uh, time now for news and notes presented by Upwork, where you could build the team that will build your business. Learn more at Upwork.com. I want to hit on this. Travis ATN, a first-round pick of the Jaguars. They had two last year. Trevor Lawrence at one. ATN in the back, round of the back end of the first round. Uh, he gets injured in training camp. I believe it was an Achilles. Uh, missed the entire season. He met with the media as part of uh, voluntary workouts for Jacksonville. And he had a nice little funny line about you know, the timing, uh, the ill timing of his injury, but also eh, there was a time to miss a year. <laughs> Was there also a part of me that was like, man, I'm glad I don't have to go through that? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, definitely. Just That's just the human element of it. Uh, just seeing the results, you definitely like, Phew. if there was any year to miss, I missed a great one. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Best of luck to Travis and everyone it. on the Jaguars that does never, never has to look at Urban Meyer in the eye ever again. That was News and Notes presented by Upwork, the world's work marketplace. Learn more at Upwork.com. Let's take a break and then welcome in Evan Silva and hit the gray beards. 22. We're going to save, gonna the, save day. the day. Gray beards. Just give us one last say. We're here today, gone tomorrow. Will you watch or follow? Age don't mean I, I cannot play. play. You will see me lead the day. You will see me lead the way. <laughs> Gray beards never go away. Gray beards never go away. Watch him as he goes. I'm gonna kill you, Dan. I'm gonna kill you. There goes my hero. He's over 30. <laughs> Graybeard's 22. Colleen, excellent backing box there. All right, Dan, I... Could have used the dry run. You I... and I, I understand that. I didn't know that you were singing it. You thought I was asking you to sing the entire song. Yes, and I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm just wondering why am I up here? <laughs> I feel so awkward. I, you should have had me leave the room, sitting behind. Between we're gonna you. we're gonna work on that together, and we're we gonna, will redeem th- ourselves. This was another crack at This it. was like I, I saw. Uh, as part of uh, the great Earn In It show that Lakeisha Jackson yes. uh-huh. Wesley was, was featured on. All the preparation that went into Mary J. Blige's sure. halftime okay. performance. <laughs> just days and days of going over that couple of minutes just to get it right. And that's yeah. what I felt like I was witnessing. Th- this here. was like the Cincinnati Bengals version of that. All right, here he is patiently waiting. <laughs> Evan Silva, the king, the big fish. Imagine Evan for the second straight year sitting through that song. I can't believe it. I, I, I uh, that is something I, I make sure to do. I want Evan to get into the feeling of the Graybeards. My collection of thirty and over remaining free agents, unrostered players, to use some established the run parlance. Evan, what's up, buddy? What's up? This is definitely not only our second year doing this because I remember when you first asked me. I think it was four or five years ago, Dan. Mm-hmm. Showing showing how memorable I am that, that you think it's only been two years. Two with the song. Two, two with, with the, the song. song. Yeah. I, was, I was still at, at oh oh two with the song. Yes. Okay. 
The song no, is but key. I was, I was still at I was still at Roto World when you first asked me. I wrote out like all these blurbs. I took like right. you know, the entire day to write. Oh, yeah, we didn't use a juice. single blurb, <laughs> and I still <laughs> four years later don't really know what my role here is. <laughs> But Same. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to cheer on this team because I think that this year's gray gray beers are going to score a lot of points. Ooh, okay. I mean, it it depends. Just to help, uh, as someone that's worked with Dan a long time, certain shows, it's just you're going to be a puppet on a string. Yeah. He's the marionette <laughs> guy. He's the master. It's not true. The, not not every show. The, no, no. But there's just some special Dan shows. This is it. That, well, this is what's important here. Thank you, Greg. Uh, what's important here for you to understand, Evan, if if I haven't made myself clear, is you are, I look at you as like a consigliere, uh, my roster consigliere when it comes to the Greybeards. And you are the compass to let me know if I've gone astray, uh, if there are people that should be on the roster but yep. aren't, pe- uh, and vice versa. And uh, the article's been on NFL.com since last week. And mm-hmm. because of the changing, shifting landscape of free agency and how veterans um, uh, approach free agency, quite frankly, there are more high quality players available now than I can ever remember in the eight years I've done this exercise. And even in the four or five days since this went live, Connie, only one player came off uh, the free agent wire. It was Calais Campbell, who, so we have to replace Calais in the middle of our defense, but otherwise this roster is locked and loaded still. So Evan, I hope that brings some clarity. And I do remember when I asked you uh, several years back to add some um, blurbs and I thought I would get two lines. And then you gave me like giant gr- paragraphs. And I remember thinking, oh, no. I feel so bad because it was like a writing assignment and it wasn't even your website. That was a miscommunication, just like Connie and I just now well, I'm sure with you, our song. I'm sure you paid Evan for that, right? Well, I, I think yeah. what we need, and I mean, Colleen didn't. He, he's paid pract- me back in podcast appearances. So yeah. we're good. There you go. Colleen didn't um, <laughs> practice at all. I think what we need to do is you got to send the lyrics over to Evan, and this segment needs to end with Evan singing the the backing the vocal. backing box. That's what the people oh, want. I do like That's that. what I want. How do you feel about that? Evan? Look at I'm not no. going to ask you to do anything <laughs> beyond no, what we're bad, doing. Bad here. idea, Greg. Bad idea. But what we could do, we could uh, Connie, we could do a take two to close yeah. the ep. Oh, we have to do it again. Well, now. you have to do it. You know, you have to okay. redeem yourself a little. Well, bit I do want to. You have to do it for the first time. Issue an official <laughs> apology uh, for being tone deaf. Just putting that out there first and foremost. That reminds me of Chris Wessling, who, when he was in Catholic school on the west side of Cincinnati, struggled in chorus class so badly that the nun put his ear to the piano to learn tone. (laughs) (laughs) So Wes was not a practicing Catholic by the end of his life. I'll I'll just say that. All right. Let's get into it. (laughs) That is an incredible story that I really completely is. forgot about. He, he always leaned into the fact that he was the least musical person he, he'd ever met and uh, rhythm. What but he loved rhythm? music. He loved music. He just was not. Taste. Yes, yeah. he was not. He, he was not going to be ever singing backing Vox uh, for Greybeards. All right, let's get into it. Enough messing around. Evan's busy. Evan is the big fish for a reason. Establish the run is uh, it has been a huge success, hasn't it, Evan? It's been a fun ride. Absolutely. And, uh, that's uh, establishtherun.com at establish the run on Twitter. All right. So check that out for a really great analysis on the sport and on the fantasy end of things. Let's get to the roster. And I do believe without a doubt, and you guys can disagree. I know it's it's hard to kind of remember past years, but this is the best roster ever. In fact, by far, I have them at 10 and 7. I what? have them Whoa. as going to the dance. And look, Evan's shaking, nodded his head, my consigliere. So let's see where we come down. We'll start at quarterback. Okay, yeah, that's your first problem in terms of going 10 and 7. It's a problem, (laughs) but also there's some magic involved. It's Fitz magic. He is on on the wire still. He's age 39, turning 40 in November, coming off obviously the uh, hip injury that ruined his season last year. Uh, but Fitz at starter, and I can't believe it, Geno Smith over Cam Newton as my backup. Greg, I threw you a little bone there. I know you love Geno. I Gino. can't believe it. This yeah. feels like uh, f- coming full circle for you and your Geno uh, relationship that you Greg had when beaming. you un- unfairly maligned him for what happened uh, in New York. I think that's a little a bit nice of a career. stretch. Is there anyone else, Evan, that you could think of, a quarterback that's out there that might have been uh, – would you put Cam ahead of Geno or even Fitz, for instance? No. And, you know, I, I actually made my own gray beards without even reading your article. And these were the uh, – and then I went back and, and reviewed, and we wound up with wow. the same two 
quarterbacks. Oh, that's so ooh, that's excellent. My my, my issue good. is that with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I just don't know what his health status is. He's 39. He's coming off a dislocated hip. You know why? I mean, he's generated very little buzz. There haven't haven't even been you know any rumors of him doing anything. Is he just going to hang it up? You know, or sign with the team maybe during the season. Geno Smith could begin the season as our would. Would Ryan we would we have to put him on reserve PUP to mm. begin the year? Geno Smith in three starts for Seattle last year, 103 passer rated. Okay, so he could carry us through the first few games. And, well, he's going to be suspended too for a DUI probably. But and, in this world, we maybe we, you know, then we could transition game, into Fitz yeah. Magic. All right, that sets up nicely. Don't trust those TMZ cop sources. That's all <laughs> wow. I'm saying. If you, if you know, you know if you know the story, you know. Uh, there's just a lot of bad bad uh, reporting out there uh, when it came to this. Uh, Only Greg know? would dig in deep on the uh, police report reporting on Gina uh, Smith's DUI. I mean, hey, Ryan Fitzpatrick's a 39-year-old who just had hip surgery. I sort of assumed he was just going to walk away because uh, he, he doesn't want to ruin the rest of his life. I, I, it, that seems like a tough way to go out, but it also seems like a warning not to play football again. The last report was that no immediate decision had been made and that he, he might try to stay ready and then see what he's thinking in like September. You oh. know, like be on the call list but that. telling teams like, eh, don't bother with me for now. I'm just, I don't want to deal with the off season. So yes, there's some risk here at quarterback but um, <laughs> at the same time, Fitz magic. Connie, at running back, I like I like the group here. I don't love it. I like it. Mm-hmm. This this team's going to get stronger as we as we go along. Jarek McKinnon, last time you saw him, he was getting snaps over former first-round pick Clyde Edwards-Alaire in the playoffs. In fact, he had over 300 total yards and a touch across three contests. He's my starter, uh, and I have David Johnson. I don't know what's left with David Johnson at this point, but he's a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's a professional. He could do some, handle some blitzes, things of that nature. That's my one-two there. What do you think, Connie? Uh, look, this is going to be a position that no matter what year it is for the Greybeards, it's going to be a thin spot for them on the roster because running backs over 30 years old, like, yeah, there's a decline there. So, Well, it- did you listen to the lyrics? I know you – we uh, the song – there's there's doubting of people that hit. 30. I tried to black the the song out from <laughs> well, my memory. Wait, the so song no. the song said though like it's mentioned how you're over thirty, right? Right. But you 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 have to then add in a little disclaimer inside the song. Jarek McKinnon doesn't turn thirty until May. <laughs> That's, All these guys are thirty be, at some point next season. The, but part. here are the lyrics, and I know Evan has them committed to memory. But if you're not aware, age don't mean I cannot play. You will see me lead the way. Gray beards never go away. So the assumption that you're making is that these guys can't hack it anymore. Maybe it's just team builders think that you turn 30 and you can't play running back anymore. I don't think it's true. It's, you know, it's not so much uh, the age for me. It's really these two players, they don't get me that excited. I am actually really loving the wide receivers. That you All right, have do we want there. to move to that? Let's hit the wide receivers. Yeah. This is by Some far. Some has been wrong about David Johnson, too too long in his career too many times probably oh He's Evan speak on. on that I'll let you speak they on both that. narrowed That's their eyes true. at each other That's I'm just true. saying who <laughs> For, further dis- misinformation out of Greg here. <laughs> I'm just saying David Johnson must have burned just about every fantasy head there for a couple years uh, All right. All right. At one point, he looked like the guy, and uh, it's I'll been it's been a steady series of underperformance, basically. Well, since. the thing is, with, with Jared McKinnon and David Johnson, they can both function in the passing game. It's a passing league, and if you look at our wide receiver crew coming up, and potentially our tight end core, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Here. Yeah, right. we but are. You, you don't want to be like Pete Carroll with Gino. You want to let Gino throw the ball 40, 45. Uh, Gino's cook. <laughs> the wide receivers. Oh Greg. Odell Beckham, who's turning 30 in November. Uh, Antonio Brown. Listen, I know he's a knucklehead, but this is a fake team. And because it's a fake team, his knuckleheaddom can't hurt me. Jarvis Landry, also 30 in November. And Julio Jones. That was kind of a tough decision. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe Julio would not be my fourth guy. I could go with A.J. Green, for instance, or any number of other players that were out there. Uh, But I guess I just got sucked in a little bit by the name brand. What do you think about this group, Connie? All right. I like that you have Beckham and Jarvis Landry teaming back up again. Well, that has to happen. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It has to. But, I mean, Beckham, I think that what he was able to do with the Rams, the fact that he was able to latch on with them and have the playoffs that he did, uh, despite the outcome in the Super Bowl for him, look, he 
increased his value. He's going to latch on with a team. Obviously, they have to wait because of the injury. But I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he ends up where um, with Julio Jones's old quarterback Matt Ryan with the mm. Colts, maybe. Um, but I, I love, I love these wide receivers. It's a good team. Silva, what do you think? And I'm curious what your four were when you did the same exercise. Yeah, Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, Jarvis Landry, Antonio Brown. So the exact same four. And then you mentioned A.J. Green. We've also got T.Y. Hilton, who I think could be effective as like a 20 to 30% snap Mm -hmm. player. And then Cole Beasley as our backup slot behind Jarvis Landry. All of a sudden, we've got some depth. We just barely missed on Sammy Watkins, who is somehow still (laughs) only 28 years old. That's crazy. Wait, really? uh, Well, that's actually progress because he was 27 for 15 years. (laughs) Exactly. And then Will Fuller, we barely missed on. He's 28 years old as well. Uh, I I couldn't disagree with you guys more on on Uh, this wide receiver group. How is AJ? First of all, Beasley, you can't sign him. Uh, even at, like as an option because the Greybeards famously play a lot of their schedule in Canada, uh, <laughs> and so his vaccination status comes into play there. It's an issue. Up it's there. like it's like the 76ers, you the know, Toronto t- Greybeards. Yeah, it's, it's a trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's troubling. Uh, how is AJ Green not on this team? AJ Green got 860 yards last year going deep he's a vertical receiver if you add We're bringing up, him to camp all right you, he's going to compete no <laughs> uh, and i don't want antonio brown on my team uh and if you add up julio jones and odell beckham's like production last year it adds up to like aj green i mean this is a man that was out there producing a Tell future us, hall of I mean, he was okay he was he made year. some big plays and you you're not going to get a lot of verticality on the gray beards and AJ well, Green well, listen can here, go down uh, you know, the field. You know who, and I don't want you know, Antonio Brown. That's my thing, though. All right, that, and that's great. But you know who did want Tony uh, Antonio Brown on his team? Tom Brady. So I think I'm going to go with the goat's opinion. Not anymore. Over, over I mean, I, not, not anymore. I do trust Antonio Brown as a deep. He's a very versatile receiver, Antonio Brown. But I, I trust him more as a deep threat than AJ Green or Julio Jones at this state. You, you don't think that the Antonio Brown situation with Bruce Arians kind of played at least a small role in the Tom Brady saga? Mm. What that that the coach had absolutely no control over his player. No, I don't think Tom Brady has I, I any love or respect Bruce for Arians Antonio was Brown. Looking, at, I, I at think this Bruce point. Arians never wanted Antonio Brown there. He actually said that publicly, and then he was looking for a reason. I mean, I think Antonio Brown was hurt. You know, I mean, he didn't practice all that week. Uh, and so I don't think it was like some phantom. No, injury. I think it was probably the like giving up in the middle of the game and then sending a bunch of Instagram posts that Tom Brady no, was no, a Antonio fake Brown phony. Said, so that, that, that probably, that probably right, listen, was the. Part I don't want to be the guy who's defending Antonio Brown, but I, I think that it, it may have played a little bit more, more of a role. I gotta say, Julio, just pure player, uh, pure skill level of what we saw, he might be the guy that would get the boot. I was gonna ask you that if you would swap, hmm. but I, I don't want Antonio Brown on the team anymore. All right, uh, let's finish off the offense, then we'll take a break and hit the defense. Tight ends, Gronk uh, and Jared Cook. And uh, I love I love this combo, Gronk. He, you know, he's saying he's not ready to commit about playing another season of football, but we know what he's doing here. He just doesn't want to be involved with boring Todd Bowles Zoom calls and He'd rather workouts. play for the Graybeards. He'd rather play with the Graybeards. And Jared Cook, uh, Evan, he remains a uh, compelling target who can get into a playmaker's groove every once in a while. Yeah, these are the same two tight ends that I ended up with. Uh, he oh, just yes. missed on Eric Ebron, who would have given us some depth, but mm-hmm. he just turned 29. One of these guys that has been around forever and you know is still really young. I think Cook is good to have on your team. You know, you're in a red zone situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you're looking for someone that can just like drop a perfectly placed Geno Smith pass <laughs> or maybe or maybe have like an illegal procedure on a great play to one of your wide How receivers. How dare that, you? That's Jared Cook in a big spot. Do that man has had moments. Check out that playoff game. How many games do the Greybeards have to play? Oh, like, we're playing this, a full schedule. It's a full like 17. 17 yeah. games. Yeah. Oh, you, so you don't. OK. Why? You don't cut them any breaks at all. Just, you know, because. Oh, because of their age. Yeah. That's. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Offensive line, I got Dwayne Brown on the left side at the left tackle blind side spot. Quinton Spahn, a cast off of Cincinnati. Matt Paradise at center. Daryl Williams at right guard. Eric Fisher at right tackle. I think this is another all-time best positional group for the Gray, Be- yeah. Gray Beards. Uh, Evan, I don't think this is, you know... Uh, a, a group of all pros, but a bunch of steady guys and Dwayne Brown who has a resume to be uh, all pro. You know... And also, J.C. Treader is still out there at center. 
and um, Riley Reef is still mm. out there at right tackle. Like I, wow. I, I know this probably sounds like hyperbole, but I think that if we get what these seven guys or so that we've named, it could be better than some of the offensive lines in the actual NFL. Oh, right there's now. no question this is better than yeah. the Panthers' offensive line right yeah. now by yeah. far. That is so sad. I yeah. mean, paired at center, yeah, maybe bring in Treader. What do you think, Dan? Though Treader, NFLPA uh, president. Um, pushing, you know, he's pushing for a lot of players to ask right. for guaranteed. Con- Are you a little worried about what he might bring in for players' rights? Are you a player-friendly owner of the group? Well, I don't, uh, I don't approve of locker room lawyers. So if that's what you're, I think like he would be the definition of it. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I value him. He's an educated guy. He's obviously um, well educated on these issues. So I don't. I, I like bringing in people that have different thoughts. This, this team is <laughs> very, very uh, open-minded on a lot of levels. Let's take a break. Hit the defense. All right, here we go. Let's hit the edge. Melvin Ingram, Justin Houston, Jerry Hughes, JPP. Here is a stat, Greggy, that really jumps out to me. I know we talked about how JPP disappeared down the stretch, uh, but this guy was a Super Bowl champion and a huge part of that winning team. He ranked dead last among 108 qualified ed- edge rushers, according to PFF last year. <laughs> dead last. Whoa. I, I'm giving him the old fresh start reset button with the gray beards, but I cannot ignore that stat either. Yeah, he'd probably be the one. The other three great picks for the Greybeards, Ingram, Houston, Hughes, those guys are in, were in my top uh, 101. A couple of them in my top 50 still still out there. I think I would replace JPP. Um, Everson Griffin, maybe, still mm. out there. What do you think, Silva? Throw him in there. Mario Addison, good good locker room guy. We know Mark uh, has the relationship uh, with him Carlos from Germany. Dunlap. Yeah, Carlos Dunlap. Dunlap. Yeah, that's a good one. No shortage. No nope. shortage yeah. of options here. We, we we did lose, as you mentioned, Calais Campbell, and we it looks like we're about to lose Melvin Ingram potentially to the Dolphins. But, oh, wow. I mean, look, there's a reason that all these guys are out there, and it's because of their age and, and their, their production has been waning. Um, I, I, I'm not too optimistic about this D-line. Yeah, I, Dan doesn't I, like I, to whoa. hear this. A, a, lot, a lot of big names, yeah. but not a lot of recent production. Well, if I can get a few more guys, uh, you know, rotationally here, maybe we can get – we have to play this right. The days of Jason Pierre-Paul playing ninety percent of the snaps, we gotta we gotta max that way. We gotta minimalize that. That can't. I happen I feel like anymore. though you're hitting on like uh, an inefficiency in the NFL market here. I mean, Justin Houston has and and Hughes now would I would throw into this mix. Yeah, and but Ingram. these guys have like all these been guys on are like they keep signing one year though. deals and they're worth a lot. They end up Sometimes. playing better than a lot of these young guys who get the big contract. Evans not yeah. sold still. I, I think that when we get to the interior defense, like Akeem Hicks is a guy that can still play, mm. and, and and he's he's in a but he's been hurt a lot, but he can still play. I just I don't know about Justin Houston, even Pierre Paul. I mean, his production was way down. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, Dominic Sue is Hughes, kind of the poster boy of what I'm talking about. You you can't yes. tell me that he hasn't been no, one of no, the best values in the NFL the last couple of years. I like our he interior just sits around defensive and line. Signs I'm like worried one about year. the edge. Yeah. You're worried about yeah. the edge. Yeah, on my interior, Akeem Hicks, as we said, we got to replace Calais. Calais? Calais. 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 Uh, Linvel jo- Joseph and uh, and Dominican Sue, who, by the way, also get to put on the cover of the media guide. Mm. That helps put some meat in the seats also, these name brands. So that's good, too. Meat in the seats. Meat in the seats. Have they started off-season, voluntary off-season Oh, they've been working their asses off since February. Wow. (laughs) A.J. Johnson, Donta Hightower, (laughs) Anthony Barr, my linebackers. Any thoughts on that group? Uh, Connie, Silva? Silva, what do you think of them? (laughs) 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 I just pulled up this article. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's not not horrible. It's not embarrassing. I'll say that. I got to say, I wasn't um, overly familiar with A.J. Johnson's work. Um, before you brought it up. But he, he did start a lot of games over the last few years. Dante Hightower is yeah. a leader in the locker room, no doubt. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's looking for a new challenge. Team captain? Do you have – who uh, are your captains? I, I, well, that's a good question. I feel like you have a I lot of leadership. A lot of leadership, would have been. Ooh, it's yeah. a lot of leadership. Him, yeah. yeah, AJ a Johnson has a checkered history, um, but got into the league and got started late. But was a starter for Vic Fangio last year. Before yeah, it's reminding me, Wes, Wes liked him back in in 2019 on that yeah. on that Broncos well, He used team. to be like a diamond in the rough type guy. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, here's my secondary, and it's this is very interesting too because cornerback Greg, you know, um, has long been an Achilles heel of the Graybeards because forget about running back, you got these old corners that are just getting roasted. It's it's not good. But now we have Stefan Gilmore, who you yep. put him in man coverage on the outside, put him on an island, let him do his thing. Don't get o- don't overcomplicate it. Put him in the right scheme, and we will. Uh, he's a lockdown number one to me. Steven Nelson, he's an undersized grinder on the opposite side. He'll take care of business. Uh, Bryce Callahan, put him in the slot. I'm feeling good about that. And then you round it out with Jack Rabbit Jenkins and Joe Hayden is a veteran presence there. I feel really good about the corners, and I've never been able too. to say I that before. I think we're going to be able to mask our upfront pass rush uh, bereftness with <laughs> our, our coverage ability on the back end. I mean, Stefan Gilmore somehow made the Pro Bowl playing in only nine well, games last year. Well, that was stupid. Year. He was oh, playing was 30 stupid, snaps but, but a game until good. the last couple of weeks. He was good. He was good when he played. I mean, he, he was they, good, they but he, only, he literally only played like 30 snaps a game for seven games and yeah, they well, put him they, in the Pro I mean, they had a bunch of young dudes that they had there too that they wanted to mix in, okay? But uh, I, I think Stefan Gilmore can still play. Steven Nelson is fine, you know? And I, I've always liked Bryce Callahan as a slot corner. It's just he can never stay healthy. I, I do not want to dig into our depth and have to rely on Jack Rabbit Jenkins, you know, mm. so these guys got to stay healthy, but I, I like how we're looking early in the year. Dan, you better watch out because Steven Nelson, he reportedly visited the Texans, so you might be losing him. I won't because once a gray beard, always a gray beard. Oh. Once it goes live on the site, psst, it's over. Do you and talked about it on this pod. It's interesting to see Dan as a GM start to adopt some NFL philosophies here, like the Ravens, maybe the Dolphins in yes. previous years, you know, building the defense back to front. This is, yeah. this is, Thank a, you. it's a strong Thank secondary you. umbrella cut. You're going to have six guys out there every snap. This is, this is, this is a better secondary than some in the NFL. Thank you for say. noticing it. This is more corners than I've ever had in the roster, but I understand the way the Good league's going too. now. Uh, and this is, yep. this is uh, Tyron Matthew at safety. So you're telling me the gray beards here in the middle of April have honey badger and Steph Gilmore on the roster. Pinch me, Evan, pinch me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Right. Pinch me, Evan. I, no, I, I agree with you. Look, I like our back end. <laughs> Evan, you don't actually him. have to pinch him. It's a, it's we, an we, expression. Someone pinch him. You're, you're, oh, really? you're in All Chicago. Right. It's, it's impossible. Even if you were True. here, he wouldn't. Someone expect pinch you. me. <laughs> uh, Rodney McLeod, our other safety, just signed with someone. That well, not before this article went live. Always no a gray problem. Beard. Always a gray beard. Finally, special teams. Sam Fiken. That's that's a dart throw. I okay. wish I could put Seabass in there. But McLeod I didn't. is uh, with the cow, the Colts. We should just uh, put that okay. out there. People should be aware of that. And Thomas Morstead is my punter. I believe he's been on the Graybeards for like eight straight years. And he just signed a, a contract with the Dolphins. But uh, it is what it is. Coaching staff, Mike Zimmer, get in that big chair. You deserve it. And I like his style. He's Graybeards all the way, yep. age 65. Peyton Manning got on the horn and called the old Zeuser. And said, "Hey, this Adam Gase, you want to give him another shot?" No, 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 no. <laughs> and no, I did no, not no. want We're to let the sheriff today. down. Listen, you know, as well, the all right, Consigliere, area, I'll I, hear I, you I got to put my foot down here, man. We're not doing this. All right, Consigliere, we're not doing this. Adam Gase, no, 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 no. Well, Peyton said that he's misunderstood and deserves a new chance with um, a new roster. You don't think That's so? Peyton being nice. Okay. I mean, what do you fine. I mean, Does Peyton care about the graybeards? Like, does he Peyton really Manning care? As our offensive coordinator. Well, How we about can, that? Oh, okay. I'll get on the horn with him. Uh, Vic Fangio at DC. I love it. And then I always have Mike Westoff as my special teams coordinator. Always. Seventy-four years young. I think you could have a a repeat of when the. Houston Oilers coaches uh, fought on the sideline. What was it, Gilbride and and Buddy Ryan? Buddy Ryan, yep. Uh, Fangio and Zimmer both trying to run the defense. (laughs) At some point, someone's throwing a punch. I love it. And think about you feed Zimmer a couple beers on the team plane. Oh, yeah. The Kirk Cousins stories that you're going to get. Oh, he's got a lot to tell. Final evaluation. Like I said, I have him at 10 and 7. We're going to the dance. And uh, that's putting a lot of faith, obviously, in Ryan Fitzpatrick coming back from this hip injury. But I just think it's a really solid roster. And I, again, as I always say, and Wes used to be brutally honest, and I was happy that he was. He would hit me with two and 14s, one and 15s, very on the reg. I want everyone's 17 game evaluation, starting with you, Greg. All right, I'm going to go four and 13. Oh, you're right. I actually, I think that's higher than that four and thirteen. Than most wow. years, 
Uh, maybe we'll oh. go five and twelve. I think, as always, injury, don't be peer pressure. Injuries are no, it's okay. I respect it. No, four to five. I think <laughs> in, injuries are always a concern. Uh, I think you're very slow at the linebacker position. Okay, uh, the front seven. I love Gino. Um, we know that building an <laughs> offense. We understand building an <laughs> offense around Gino throwing the ball forty times a game. It's going to have its ups and downs for sure. All right, yeah. Connie. I, okay. okay, Greg. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate it. I'm going to go as... I apologize for my outburst. Go ahead, I Kelly. I'm sorry that I think that the Greybeards are going to have a losing record, but okay. they're going to go eight and nine. Oh, all right. I can live with eight and nine. respectable. I can live with eight and nine. Okay. That would be the greatest Greybeards record ever, uh, I believe. So. Wow. <laughs> should, should we have, have Erica yeah. check? Yeah, Ricky, can you check uh, pro football reference I don't think on that? anyone's even projected you to Definitely. win eight games until you did 10 this season. So that I think no, it's No, that's a, a record. All right, yep. Evan, break the tie. I have one uh, one guy. Well, I got one guy saying it's a great team. It's me uh-huh. uh, or a good team. Greg says they're going to be brutal. No, I mean, you Connie won't even be the worst team mediocre. in the league. You're, you're drafting like four. Well, four and 13 is top five draft pick. Yeah, you'll be top five. Okay. <laughs> and Connie's got me in the middle of the pack, but yep. on the outside looking in. Maybe I just, I'm giving you an extra win. That, that was right, too five and, five, five and 12. 12. Okay. Five and 12. Where do you come down, Mr. Silva? Well, you know, eight and nine in a league where almost half the damn teams make the playoffs, like we could sneak in. Mm, back door. You know? Love it. Put us put us in the weakest division. We got a shot. But I think the I think the sports books would set our our over under win total at like four and a half. <laughs> uh, you maybe think maybe so? five. Maybe five. And I would absolutely take the over. And it sounds Bang like we over. would all take the over. Yeah. Bang the over. So, well, Greg would sit it out. Yeah, I, don't I like think the over. That, I was, it's not the smart play. Uh, yeah, I think Vegas had it nailed. They usually do. Uh, four, four and a half seems about and right. And you should. And this is, this affects you, Grave Digger, behind the glass. Uh, we will. We are in Toronto this year. We're the Toronto Greybeards, and we are in the AFC South. Little geography lesson there. Not great, but that's the way it is. And we have replaced the Texans because you know who's going to complain. <laughs> well, yeah, as Greg said, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, what's the point, Evan? You've said it all. I mean, it's a tradition like no other. My roster consigliere, and you've said it all. And you can sing some, too, if you would like. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, check out Evan uh, on Twitter at, I believe it's Evan yeah. Silver, right? You got that you, unlocked? You, how do you, do you feel guilty for helping to make, like, Adam Leviton uh, obscenely wealthy? And, and and talking about it a lot. Is it know? guilty? You know, this is the monster you've helped create, Evan. Oh. I don't even know how to respond to that. But, <laughs> but thanks so much for having me on uh, on the show, you guys, uh, every year. And uh, hopefully you'll bring me back for the fantasy extravaganza. Mm. You, know, you know you will get the invite. We need the big fish. Okay. And notice how he did not – he didn't deny that – Leviton is very oh, wealthy no, he now. He tweets about it. You know, he's yeah. he's he's running the game. You and, know, and guess who runs that site with Leviton? That's what I'm saying. So that must mean Silva himself is now extremely wealthy. Look at you. So what is your net income right now at Evan? All right, thanks again so much, guys. <laughs> you're not guys, like you're not going to become like a crypto NFT bro like no, Adam no, though, no, like because no, no. I like Adam so much, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned. Oh, okay, all right. You know, I'm keep worried about that too. Yeah. I'm worried about that too when, when it comes to him. All right, there he goes, Evan Silva. It's very important that we keep an eye on the business side of things in our industry. And uh, this based is Dan, on that, the owner, talking of yeah, the great yeah. right now, right? And if uh, those guys are raking in the cash, that's something we need to be plugged in on. Mm-hmm. Just put it like that. I get it. All right. That was good. Now, Colleen, yeah. I think I'm trying to think the best way to do this. I think what we should do is uh, we're going to stop down for a, just a couple seconds and I'm going to ask you or tell you where to actually jump in because it was a failure to communicate. Or, between or me and you. I think we do it live right now and like SNL style. I just try and follow. No, you. we have to get the. That's what okay. we did the first time. All right. And I think should we get Greg in the mix? Yes. No. Greg, you have to do it. Yeah, you got to do Greg. what? You got to say. Okay, we're gonna take a, a a quick break here and we're gonna come back. Okay. And we're going to hit this. All, all right? right. And we're gonna get it right. We're gonna knock it out of the park, okay. and that will be our sign off for the app. Totally. Okay. Here we yep. go. Right here, it's take two. All right. Great beards. We 
We're gonna save the day. Ricky, you can get in too if you want. Gray beards. Just give us one last say. We're here today, gone tomorrow. Will you watch or follow? Age don't mean I cannot play. You will see me lead the day. Oh, it's okay. Gray beards never go away. Never go away. Yeah. That's much better. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, I just got to work on the actual words. I had three I words would, to say. And you messed that up too. But I got two out of three that right. That was good. Then also there's next there. year. There's the always there. next year. That's right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Greg, I didn't hear any of your backing box I, I never there. jumped in. Humble brag, my directing just now, and I'm like, take Colleen full. <laughs> take Dan. Go to our Instagram, guys. You have to see it. Oh, no. Check it out on the gram. Amazing. Over 20K strong. We'll be back uh, on Thursday. Check it out. We'll be hitting the draft. Some, hopefully, have a good draft guest. And then the Friday show is back. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and also, if you have, how about this? If any musicians out there, send in your version of the Greybeard's theme, and maybe we'll use it down the line. Maybe next year. That's it. Until Thursday, heat the call. Oh.